Hi, my name is Catherine and I'm a craftaholic. Welcome to my craft room and my channel. Oh my goodness, people, it's unbelievable, but we already reached 100 subscribers. I can't believe it and I would like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for subscribing, for watching and for liking my videos. You guys are awesome. Thank you so very much. For the milestone, I'm going to do a giveaway as well because it's custom Mary in um at least in the crochet world and I can't wait to send you or one of you one of my own creations and I very excited about that. Please bear with me. I have to tell you what the rules are and I hope I'm not going to forget any of them, but I will also write them in the information box below so you can uh, check them out. What else are we going to do in this episode is the whips and UFOs as usual. I didn't really um, realize that maybe not everyone is familiar familiar with these acronyms. We use them a lot in the crochet slash yarn slash uh, fabric um, world. A whip is a work in progress and a UFO is an unfinished object. When you finish it, the UFO just becomes an FO. And sometimes a whip, if you wait long enough, will become an, a UFO as well. And usually UFOs are stashed in boxes. And as you know, I've got plenty of those. So let's talk about this giveaway. Like I said, to honor my 100 subscriber um, milestone, I would like to give away a handmade gift. How this works is that I'm going to ask you to leave a comment in the comment section. And I'm going to use a random comment picker to choose the winner. Now this giveaway is open worldwide. Anyone can enter. As long as there are no laws in your country against receiving a gift from Belgium. The shipping costs are on me of course because I'm giving you a present but I cannot be reliable for any customs or other costs that might occur uh, due to the laws in your country so make sure um, you won't get into trouble for that. This contest or this giveaway starts today on February 28th and will end next week Thursday on March 5th. On March 5th, I will announce the winner and I will ask the winner to contact me over email so I can get your address to send you the presents. Uh, your data won't be used for any other purpose than for me to than for me to send your presents. Now, of course, I can guess that you are all very anxious to know what the presents is. Well, there's actually um, you have a choice. You can choose this bookmark or these earrings. The earrings are made of Swarovski beads. There we go. And the bookmark, for people that don't know this uh, system, you use it like this, you just put the string between the pages and you leave the beads to dangle on the outside of the book. So what you need to do is comment in the comment section with which of the presents you would like to receive. It's very important that you use the word bookmark or your word earrings because that's what I'm going to use. Uh, in the random comment picker to pick out one of the comments. Also, it would be very nice if the winner was a subscriber. So don't forget to subscribe and 
could give the video a thumbs up, that's very much appreciated. So then, let's get on with the whips and UFOs. The first thing I want to share is a finished object, and that is my uh, autumn painting. I'm actually very, very, very happy with it. I'm sorry about the light, it's uh, dark out, and I have a feeling that the light is even worse when it's dark. But, um, so this is how it ended up. I don't know if you can see, I used a gold paint underneath the some parts of the, the painting and it's coming through. I really, really, really love this effect. In fact, I really like that paint so much that my teacher, Natalie, came up with this idea of doing um, kind of a color study with these um, metallic paints. Now, what I need to tell you is in our class, in our course, um, everybody needs to start with a study of the colors. And it might seem like something tedious or less fun to do because it takes a lot of work, but it gives you such a great base for painting. It's, it's like learning to drive or riding a bicycle. It's such a basic thing and without you, without learning it, you just cannot paint properly. In fact, we only use the basic colors. We have two types of reds, four types of blues, two types of yellow, and we create our own, own colors with it. And that's all thanks to that uh, color study. Now what I'm gonna do is um, use a metallic base and the four different types of blues we have, just two warm and two cool blues, and see how they work with the metallic base, and not only the meta how, how they work, but um, how the base can really, really change how the color ends up looking. I'll insert some pictures to show you the start of the project, but it's really just um, canvas that I started uh, preparing and um, but it's also nice to see. What I'm also going to insert is a little video clip of our uh, studio where we where we paint. And um, the paintings you'll see in the beginning are the apothecary bottles. And that's the first project or the first painting we all have to do when we start. First we do the color studies and then they, with, with the color study we have to make the painting of the bottles. And it's such a nice thing to see how everybody has his own style and has his own interpretation of the same thing. And that's also why Natalie has us do has us do that, do the bottles. It's because from that first work, she can see what direction you're gonna go and she can guide you and uh, show you the best way to develop your skills. You'll also see uh, my uh, paint colleagues at the table of being very, very studious and good pupils. <laughs> I love them so much. They're the greatest, greatest bunch. <laughs> is what I did at the quilting bee. Actually, it did not work on the pockets of posies. Uh, our teacher, Kathy, had three different projects for us to work on. 
uh, we got to pick one. We got the um, patterns from her and we got a workshop about it. There was uh, the choice between a very cute tiny little dress that's actually a pouch to put lavender in the bag which I'm making and a poof or ottoman really large project and seriously high skill level I'll insert a picture of the three projects right here so now like I said I'm I chose the bag and I am very very excited about how the colors turned out I actually have fabric already sitting for two more bags because I really love it this is how it looks right now I just have to um, um basically finish it it's all my almost done i i amazed by myself because like i said before it's been eight years since i did any stitching so I, i'm actually amazed with uh how fast i managed to do this the inside of the bag is in a gray polka dot fabric and the outside of the bag is this beautiful pink flower fabric that I actually, I think this one um, I bought when Kathy still had her store. What's also very nice about this bag is that the sides will be adorned with a band of tiny, tiny little granny squares. So right now, this is my whip my crochet whip i'm making these tiny squares with a 1.5 1.5 millimeter hook and crochet thread i have 10 to make um halfway they're actually very fun to do i'll link um the tutorial the youtube tutorial down below but it's in dutch so I'm sorry for my friends that do not do not speak Dutch. It's uh, a tutorial in Dutch from wolplein.nl. Um I always say I don't I can't crochet in Dutch, but I had to I had to for now and um I'm I'm learning thanks to that though because um as you crocheters might know there's no there's an international symbol a symbol language but we all use different uh, different terminology um, and I like uh, the US the American um, vocabulary the uh, British is very confusing to me and the Dutch is very different as well that who knows how many languages we can still learn to crochet in so these grannies will um, be set around the bag and i will also put a large button on top normally it should be a very large button but um, i'm gonna put a slightly smaller one i think it's a 18 millimeter uh, swarovski button that i will uh, use now that's it for the ufos and the whips i know it's not that much oh no it's not i have finished objects my dream catcher i finished my dream catcher i used some crystals and shells and metal beads crystals again and see this button it's the same i'm going to use on that on the bag so i'm 
pretty happy with this one. And then we have this one. This has been challenging because this is the first time I worked with very thin thread, also a 1.5 millimeter hook. But I loved it. I thought I would hate it and I thought it would be so much harder and tedious, but I like how how lacy it is and 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 yeah, I'm definitely gonna make more doilies or or doily like things. I really really like it. Of course, I would never do a bed spread with thread or you know curtains or or tablecloth, but for such small things, it's it's very fun to work with. I I really really love it. Well, there you go. That's it for whips and UFOs and FOs. Now I decided to also do my very what's in the box section. Actually, I I need your help. I would like a fun name for this section of my vlog. What what shall we call this? Shall we call it just what's in the box or or it's not really an unboxing because for me an unboxing is when you order something or you receive something and you don't know what's in it. Well, actually, technically, I don't always know what's, what I'm going to uh, find in the boxes. But please, any suggestions are welcome in the comment section below. So I got some stuff out of the banana boxes and put them in a... container and I'm gonna pick out a few of these bags today not all of them because that will take us way too long but I will show you these are basically UFOs and I would like to turn them into FOs if I still remember what I was making or what I was intending to do with it or how I can do it or what the pattern was um, this is very much an adventure. I have not prepared this, so I'm going to be as surprised as you all are with what's in the boxes. So, oops. this is the first one. This, I actually know what it is. And I actually know how to finish it. And it's perfectly done. I really don't have that much to do. This is a crochet necklace. Now there's these are all seed beads or drop beads. I see that the camera is not blocking out my face. There you go. So basically they're beads. I can see there's um, seed beads and there's drop drop beads right there but I also noticed there's tiny fire polished beads I have to learn how to do this oh there you go this one is a fire polished bead and what I need to do now what's left to do now is that I have to take this really 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 long string of beads separated with simple chain uh, stitch there you go so and I have to get them all together take them together like this to make a very thick necklace with a multi-strand necklace like this and it's really not showing up again but there you go so it makes a multi-strand neck multi a multi-strand necklace um which can be very chic uh but can also 
be worn casually on a t-shirt like this. It will, will bling up any outfit and they're really fun to wear. Now the reason why you should put this on a roll or a tube is because otherwise you get one giant tangled mess and I'm okay with detangling things and unknotting things but this is a nightmare to uh, try to uh, untangle. So this, she says quite confidently, this will be done for the next video, I promise. Now I'm setting myself up, I know. <sighs> Another UFO. This will not be done for next video. Sorry. Because first of all, I need to untangle. Like I said, it's really not fun. But what it is, is bead crochet. Also, but a very different type of bead crochet. And these are very, very tiny beads on quite thin thread. It's, um, I don't know how you call that in English, but in French it's cordonné. It's basically the thickest um, sewing thread you can get and these beads are crocheted one by one in a tubular uh, way. I will have a tutorial on bead crochet on the Turkish kind of bead crochet and on the tubular bead crochet. I will not, however, do it with these beads because this is way too difficult. This is expert level and I'm gonna start with large beads and with two colors so that you can uh, learn it easily. This is quite challenging and yeah, I'm not sure how long it will take me to make one thread with beads out of this mess. So Maybe that's my... Uh, my goal for next week, untangling it. <laughs> then I have a third project, let's do three. Now this is a mixed bag. What is in there? Ah, yes. This is <clears throat> the start of a bead embroidered bracelet. Um, I'm not gonna say that this is almost done. It's one third done, but it's still still a lot of work that needs to be done. Now these um, green uh, pearl things are actually Swarovski pearls. I really love to work with those. And the these are seed beads. And I see that I also use like uh, the, the smaller beads so this bag actually contains <clears throat> it also has a hole in it apparently beads down but this, this bag contains the materials I need to finish it so that'll be fine I can see there's also other stuff in there like a ring that is finished but with um, silver beads that need a little a little cleaning fire polished beads and silver beads and then this oh boy this is far from finished. If I recall, it's from a book called Micro Macrame. And the technique, I believe, is tatting in English. Not sure, don't quote me on that. Now, this was supposed to be a 
tenth jewel with a ring with a ring in the middle and then the jewel on the on the top of your hand and then a bracelet now i don't know if i'm gonna finish this the way it was intended to or use this actually a very pretty part to make kind of a necklace out of it what do you guys think shall i make the hand jewel with it or shall i convert it into a necklace let me know what you think now what else is in this bag i'm not gonna hold it up anymore because all the beads are falling out aha uh -huh. this little it looks like a, a starfish and it used to be an earring but the stud fell off so i think i'm gonna make a pendant out of this yeah this will become a pendant and what else nothing else just the beads needed to finish the bracelet yeah just the bracelet there's actually no not even beads for the hand tool okay so this is something to work on but also not gonna be finished next week I actually have a finished embroidered bracelet that I can show you um, so you get an idea what the bracelet looks like when it's finished there you go this is of course a different design usually when I when I make these things I design as I go now this one I use some kind of, of, of pattern I, I made up in the beginning so I started with the with the center and I made the leaves and then I filled in uh, the spaces again there's too much of my face I think on the camera there you go this one has brown and gold beads and just the one sort of the center it's backed with leather and there you go it closes like this and it makes a very pretty cuff I'll put it on so you can get a better idea what it looks like now bead embroidery i really love it but it's a lot of work it's slow work but you can make magnificent magnificent things with it and one of my favorite designers that works with bead embroidery is sherry Ser serafino and i'll try to to locate her website and i'll um, put a link below as well excuse me one second my nose is itching like crazy and i'm back i'm sorry about that my my eyes even tearing up Oof. can we say that some someone is uh thinking about kissing you when your nose itches so i don't know maybe it's the boyfriend downstairs who's uh, thinking i'm taking too long with my video and i need to come down who knows um let's do one more bag what do we have here ah it's actually a um, piece that i made years ago many 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 years ago and it broke so now what am i gonna do with it am i gonna make it again remake it the way it was but the thing is i'm afraid that the result will be the same so 
So this is a uh, fluorite stones, gems or minerals or half semi precious stones. It's a, it's the pendant. And then the chips. These irregular uh, shards of of, of um, semi precious um, these we call them chips. And they're stitched my face is in the in the focus again. They're stitched together with seed beads. But the beading wire broke probably because of the sharp edges on the bead holes. So I need to think about what I'm gonna do with this. I actually really, really loved the design. That is not sturdy enough. So this will have be something that I need to think about how I can recycle this, how I can give this a new life because it's actually one of my favorite semi-precious semi stones because they, they really vary from, from purple to green. Some purple are almost black, some greens are almost, or, and pinks are, are almost white. And um, I love purple and green together. I think it's a wonderful color combination and this stone has it naturally. So, something to think about. I should start making containers with the the different, to put the different things in that I get out of the boxes. The things to think about box, the things to finish box and the things to repurpose box. I'll do that for the next episode. Okay. So I think we're good for today. This has already gone much, much longer than I thought it would. I'm sorry. Um, but I'm really, really enjoying doing these episodes. Uh, next episode, I will also share my program schedule. I'm trying to figure out the, um, the days that I will release the videos. I can already tell you that the vlogs will always be on Thursdays. Once a month there will be a cat tries and the first one will be the hand spindle. And I will also have one tutorial per month. Maybe more later on, but right now let's start with one a month, one cat tries a month and uh, one weekly. So, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, please, if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you want to be notified of uh, new episodes when they come out, you hit the subscription bell. But not just subscribe, you click on it and then you will get a menu with three possibilities. You have to click on the all, because if you don't, you get the personalized and I have noticed that if you do that you don't always get all the notifications so if you don't want to miss an episode click the all bell and you'll be set also if you like this video give me a thumbs up thank you very much if you have any questions for me any suggestions leave a comment in the comment section below and don't forget to join the contest for the giveaway um, you comment with earring or bookmark, depending on which price you would like to get. And next episode, we'll see if you're a winner or not. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting me. And I see you next week. Bye. <laughs>